Everybody, welcome to tonight's tasting of Face Off in the Family. A face off between two stags. Now, this idea comes from a commenter last night, and I want to thank you all for always coming up with these cool ideas for me to do. So, make sure if you ever have an idea, if you have something that you want me to taste, if you have uh, if you have a concept or whatever. Please do not in any way, shape, or form hide that from me. Get that to me as soon as you possibly can. Because believe it or not, I am always looking for ideas, things to taste. Now, what's been happening here the last few nights is you all have been talking me into additional tastings. I'm not going to say that's going to happen tonight, but it may just happen tonight. So I think about the things that you would maybe like me to taste after that I've tasted these two things. And let's pray that I can sleep in tomorrow. That would be very nice. Now, uh, before we jump into tonight's face-off, I want to go over what's ahead. So I've got a very first tomorrow. A very first. Uh, tomorrow, I am actually going to have an artist perform live and then we're going to taste some whiskey. Now, this is going to happen at 1 o'clock. So set your uh, go to click that subscribe button and click the, like, reminder. Uh, you can also find this Alex Hall um, live stream available. You click the, you know, you click the, the reminder button. And he's a Sony recording artist, extremely talented. And get this, his uh, song is Whiskey on the Table. So we want to make sure we hit that. We want to watch that. And uh, you guys don't want to miss that. Trust me, trust me, trust me. He is a super talented dude. And this Friday, I'm going to be announcing in a live format, just like this, the best bourbons of 2020 so far. What I'm doing is I'm going to be doing this by quarter you know, pairing them down by quarter so you guys can have an idea of like what I'm tasting. And and that way we don't get to the end of the year and it's just a big old list that, you know, surprises everybody. And also last year I had 30 plus whiskeys. I'm not going to do that again. Um, at most I'll have 20. But, um, you know, I've learned, I have learned to uh, keep my mouth shut when it comes to predictions on the amount of whiskeys that I will have. So, so there you go. So make sure you tune in for uh, the best uh, bourbons, best whiskeys of 2020. That will be on Friday at 9 o'clock. Now, uh, a lot of you all have checked out the uh, already, or I hope you have, the clown interview from uh, Slipknot. It, um, it, it's had the most views of anything I've ever done in terms of a video. I think right now it's at uh, 250,000 uh, views across all uh, um, all platforms, and it's been picked up in a lot of like uh, the rock magazines and the rock blogs. Uh, basically, these were uh, tons of tons of people uh, who really admired Cl who really admire clown and. Um, just an incredible human being. If you have not a chance to watch uh, part one, go to YouTube and uh, look for that uh, look for that interview with uh, Slipknot's clown. Now this will air 7 a.m. on Friday. That's the part two. If you subscribe to the podcast, you will get the full episode. So make sure you are subscribing to the podcast. You can listen to the full episode when you're working out or. Or, or whatever, but the video will be up premiering 
at 7 a.m. Now, Andrew uh, brings up a very nice point about the hand sanitizer article. He works in the um, emergency department uh, at the hospital, and uh, they're using that. That's fantastic. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, you, the Kentucky distilling community, really all distillers across this country, have stepped up in an unprecedented fashion. And as we are here tonight to sip some whiskey together, to talk about things, I look at like the distillers as really – they're setting a great example for how we should handle this crisis. Instead of like sitting back and feeling sorry for ourselves of, of like whatever our situation may be, the distillers are stepping up and actually doing something about it. Now, we're all here. We're gathering. And I believe that we can make a difference here by just communicating with one another. We can make a difference in one another's lives. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're just sipping some whiskey and talking about them. And what I like to do, what I will always try to bring to the table, is I'm not just someone who's going to taste something and then talk about it. I want to talk about history. I want to talk about the meaning and the importance of the names on the label and everything in between. At the end of the day, I, I wrote books. And now I'm in front of a camera talking about the stuff I wrote about, I've written about for the last 15 years. So this is like, I mean, this is what I do on a Tuesday anyway with some you know, random person in a subway or, or whatever. I mean, you should you should hear the amount of people I've bored over the years with some of my conversations. So uh, thank you, Andrew, for bringing that up. And I, again, the distillers are setting a great example, not only for us, but for the rest of America. And I think it's very fitting that we have a conversation tonight about a distiller Name um, George T. Stagg. Now you look at that photo. I mean, I wouldn't want to cross that guy. I wouldn't want to fuck with him. I mean, he looks like a he looks like one mean motherfucker right there. I could see him like pulling out a saber and gutting you if you like pissed him off. And you know who pissed him off on a regular basis? E. H. Taylor. E. H. Taylor was his business partner, and they actually you know kind of sued each other a couple times. And even after George T. Stagg's death, the company that managed uh stags you know basically his fortune and everything they still sued each other so e.h taylor and george c stag well they work together didn't always necessarily get along from a business perspective but stag is arguably the most important businessman of the 1800s he basically creates the grounds that is now buffalo trace he gives e.h taylor arguably the best distiller of that time he gives E.H. Taylor the financial means to become what he becomes. And so George T. Stagg touches every little piece of American whiskey. And when he died in um, when he died in 1893, let me show you the uh, – oh, there he is again. God, he's – I don't think he was a very good-looking dude. Um, when he died in 1893, he was actually sick for a couple years – uh, but they really mourned him as as an important leader, as an important businessman. You know, being a distiller was a part of his bio, but really it was about like how important he was to the community. And he would also was quite wealthy, and so he was getting treatment for uh, for lung issues in in places like John Hopkins. So for for that time, uh, he definitely would have been considered like a one percenter after his death we see that stag uh the e.h taylor family continues to be uh up against the, the stag family and they continue to sue one another now this would go on you know for for some time there would be it would go through various uh courts and what's ironic is history actually repeats itself with this scenario you see when castle and key actually renamed itself castle and key they tried to use the old taylor uh language and naming in their in their uh in their tours and so when they did that sazerac which owns buffalo trace which is essentially george t stag and they, they still own george t stag they didn't like that very much and they sued castle and key for the use of that um old taylor trademark and they thought it was against the 
against the rules, against the against the against their trademark, a, a violation of their trademarks. Well, they lost uh, not once but twice, and so Castle and Key is allowed to use uh, the old Taylor E. H. Taylor history at that particular facility. And the lawyer behind that case for Castle and Key was none other than Brian uh, from Sip and Corn, whom you might know from our Bourbon Pursuit Roundtable. So that's a little bit of a history for you there. Now, E.H. Taylor, or not E.H. Taylor, we're, we're on Stag now. Uh, Stag comes out in the early 2000s as part of the uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. I actually have the very first bottle, and that's probably, if you put a gun to my head in, in, in a moment and say, all right, you have to pick one whiskey in your collection. It's probably the first, uh, you know, George T. Stag. My good friend John Hansel, uh, it was, I believe, it was his highest rating for a bourbon during his time at at Whiskey Advocate. And John and I have very, very similar palates. And I've had one taste of this product for the very first one, and it was mind blowing. There's not been a single bourbon from uh, the Stag collection that has beat uh, the first one. Uh, and that was uh, 2002, if I, bl I believe I'm correct on that. Okay, so this is the tale now for the tale of the tape. And they, they introduced uh, Stag Jr. in uh, 2013 to kind of take advantage of the popularity of, of, uh, of Stag and the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Now, one thing that Buffalo Trace is really famous for is sending out press releases and talking about like the uh, the shortage they have because let's face it, everybody wants Pappy Van Winkle, William Leroy Weller, Elmer T. Lee, uh, Rock Hill Farms, uh, Blantons. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But ironically, the one the one brand that they didn't do like continual press releases on was this guy. Stag Jr. So for a long time, this was this for the last I want to say five years. This has kind of been like an under the radar brand that you could still find regularly on the shelf, about the same kind of like uh, proximity as Rare Breed. Um, so this was this was something you could still find in the in the stores. You would have to maybe look a little harder than say Jim Beam White. Don't get me wrong. But it was still, um, it it was still very much it was still very much available. Now that uh, our good friends at Breaking Bourbon and a few other people have given it some very nice notoriety, we are starting to see that uh, availability kind of peel back a little bit. Now, what I have here tonight, I have batch thirteen. I have batch thirteen. I do not have batch twelve, for some reason. I drank uh, all of uh, all of batch twelve, um, yeah. And my my wife and I we we drank all of batch twelve. So I don't I don't have batch twelve to go up against George T. Stag tonight. I have thirteen, and that is the latest release. So let's take a look at a tale of the tape. Here we are. Batch thirteen is one hundred twenty eight point four proof. It's eight years old. Now I have tasted it previously. And I have been kind of like, I liked it, but it didn't beat uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof in, um, in my last tasting. Now, is that fair? Eh, probably not. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is probably going to be, you know, most things that I taste um, right now. So that one, that one is, uh, is definitely very interesting. Now, with that said... I tasted uh, the George T. Stag. This is the 2019 George T. Stag, and I tasted this um, up against. Uh, so what I did was I took the entire, I took the entire Buffalo Trace Antique collection when I got my samples, just like this little bottle right here. When Buffalo Trace sent me these, I took that entire collection, and I tasted it blind up against um, five other. I think it was five other you know, non BTAC whiskeys. And what won that tasting was Rare Breed. But here's the thing. This was when I was just starting out with my live streaming 
and so my techni technical stuff wasn't really all that down um, and it completely you know I lost it on YouTube I ended up doing it on Instagram and then the story went away so I that was before I was savvy enough to know what the hell I was doing but I do know that uh, the <laughs> that my Instagram post later caused quite the stir with, with folks. And Rare Breed did beat uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Now, it's also to say that when I would taste this, uh, you know, this George T. Stag in another tasting, anytime I have tasted this particular release of George T. Stag, it has not fared well for me. In fact, when I've tasted it knowingly, I was just kind of like, meh. So... Everyone wants to say that oh this is uh this is a no brainer this is this is going to be an easy one I'm going to pick George T Stag over Stag Jr. Well tonight I'm wearing my very first ascot that I ever got and you just never know you never know what what the what this ascot will will bring to me and I am actually not shitting you about that this ascot is my this is my my first one. And I tend to be a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more moody with this one. Like I get a little bit more moody with, with my yellow ascot. That's kind of kind of weird, I guess. But uh, here we are. We're going to get into it. Let's see if we have any questions out there. Uh, Andrew Clark says, 2019 is sissy proof. Uh, George T. Stagg, listen, Andrew. You got to cut back on you got to cut back on the use of sissy man. This is 2020. Can't be saying that stuff. Bad Andrew. Um let's see here. We got a we got a question from uh, we got a question from TFLO. Where does one buy an ascot? Seriously? Well, actually I do have ascots you can buy. I, um I don't think they're online right now, but ascots are not not the easiest thing to find. But you can find them in in various uh, you know men's clothing stores. Um, if you're in Louisville, Rhodes and, and Louisville has them. But of course, they're closed like everybody else. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here in the chat. Lots of folks coming in from um, lots of folks coming in from uh, Facebook. Uh, Chris Haynes says, dang it, Fred, stop telling everybody about Stag Jr. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry, but I, I feel like, I feel like I gotta, I gotta say something about it when something's good, you know, but you know, there, I guess there are times that I even regret saying something's good. Cause then I can't get the stuff like I used to, but it is what it is. I'm, uh, it's, uh, I guess it's a compliment. I don't know uh oh looky here everybody fred is a uh fred is his own bourbon celebrity he's a tour guide of buffalo trace and uh he's talking all about that first release of uh of stag jr i remember it well too 134.4 proof it was delicious and i don't have any of that left that's that's one of the things when i get good bourbon folks it doesn't stick around very long in fact, tonight, just like I have done previously, I want you to I want you to look in your I want you to look in your uh, cabinets, in your in your collections, and I want to see if you have if you have the bottles that I'm drinking tonight, and if you do, send me a picture via Instagram, and what I'll do is I will share it in in here so what we need here is we need more heroes opening up their good whiskey instead of hoarding it and keeping it in the basement and hiding it from everybody so the whole thing is right now we can't drink right now i can't be in a room with you uh because well because that's where we are in this in this environment we can't be in the same room together we can't gather we can't go to bars we can't really convene like we normally would so this is the community tonight that we gather and we break out our bottles and we crack them open together and we sip them. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I know I've got some whiskeys here that a lot of people do not have. So that's why I'm encouraging those of you who do have it, go ahead and grab the bottle, crack it open, pour a little bit, sip along with me, take a picture, share it on Instagram, 
Also, send me that Instagram photo, and I'll put it in tonight's live feed. All right, here we go. Now, this is the last. This is the last of uh, of my sample from uh, George T. Stag. I was not able to get a bottle this year. I was able to buy uh, one of Handy and and um, I think Weller. But um, there we go. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Oh yeah, smell you smell that coming right on out. Okay, so we have um, we have the we have the whiskeys poured. The face-off begins now. Steven asked, is Harlan a good dude? I think Harlan is a great guy. Uh, he's he's kind of he's a Kentucky boy, you know. Really uh, got an interesting sense of humor and a huge Wildcats fan. Um, I enjoy my time with Harlan. Anytime I get to spend with him, I always enjoy it. I think I think he's a good guy, but he's he's very intense and he loves his whiskey. He also makes vodka, which you know he um, he usually shuts me up pretty quickly when I start bitching about vodka. He says, he says, well, you know, Fred, that's how we pay bills. So Fireball and Wheatley Vodka pay bills, and that allows them to build more warehouses. That's, that's hard to argue with, but still, vodka sucks. I'm just saying. It sucks. Okay. All right, Stag is coming in. Stag is coming in nice. Oh, Stacy says she's got a bottle of uh, of 2017 uh, George T. Stag. She's cracked it open and is drinking along. Now, Stacy, this is not the same bottle as mine, but I would love it if you shared it, and we could share that tonight on the stream so we can encourage other people to crack open those good bottles of theirs and just have a good time. Same with you, Nick. Send me that photo. Send me a photo on Instagram, which is easiest for me to to pull up during the. It's easier for me to pull up pictures on Instagram than it is uh, Facebook. All right, so Stag is coming in really, really nice. Got a very nice caramel forward nose, nutmeg underneath it. Mm. Let you all get a little look there. Sorry about that, Stacy. I hope that doesn't... Um, keep you from taking the picture and sharing it so we can put it up here and show everybody that you're the hero that we hope in uh, drinking the good bourbon oh yeah oh yeah It's a little, it's, it's oily. It's like, it gets on that palate and it is, um, it's got some nice um, oilness to it. It's really, mm. I, I like the way it approaches the palate. It, it, it feels like, it does feel like oil. Like it feels like oil on there. You'll hear me a lot of times talking about like how, uh, a, a bourbon will feel like butter. What I mean by that, it's all encompassing around the palate. It's like drenches the tongue. It just drips down the palate real pretty. Whereas an oil one, 
will come in like a bead and like it will bead out. So it's like right now what I felt on the palette is like it came in with the splash and then it and it kind of moved off in little beads or bubbles all over the palette. So it was spreading across my palette like uh, like oil would look like in, in water or something where it would separate uh, the oil into little bubbles. So from a mouthfeel perspective, that's very unique. I do like that. And from a flavor perspective, what we have is we have a, a really nutmeg, uh, a fried pie crust, you know, some some hints of fruit. I really get some like black fruit out of this, like uh, like blackberries. Um, and then, you know, then it kind of just psh, goes away. The finish on this, and this is like I'm, I'm reminded of this whiskey. Um, as I'm, I'm, I'm detecting it, seeing it kind of go around and what's going on and then boom, it's gone. There is no, um, it, it's no, there's no, ah, my goodness, it, there's nothing to hold. There's nothing there after you swallow it. It's just gone. Like a really, really disappointing finish. Now, Jessica Holmgren says, it's very funny to watch me sniff a glass. Now you have to understand that Jessica is the uh, uh, is the daughter of uh, Brian Jopek, who was my battle buddy in Iraq. So Jessica is a family to me. How you doing, Jessica? I hope you're well. And uh, if I do recall, you pretty much laughed at me all the time, no matter what. So sniffing a glass, walking in your living room. I guess I'm just a funny guy. All right, so... James Lopez says, you got to drink when marzipan is mentioned. Well, here's the problem. Well, I don't think you're going to find marzipan in either one of these. Uh, so this is going to be a pretty boring uh, drinking game. I will say, um, I will say that, you know, Stag Jr. is looking pretty good for, for this uh, taste off. Now, as you may recall, I called out people and said, hey, show me your photos. Crack open the whiskeys that we're tasting here and show them to me, and I will put your photo on, on the feed. And so everybody can see that you're the hero we hope you are and that you're just another great person opening their good bourbon and sharing it with the community. Maybe not physically, but in, in uh, photo form. So this is approaching pretty pretty grain forward, um, and not in a bad way, but we're talking like cornbread out of the oven. Uh, Doris, I miss you too. That's the thing about this isolation. It's kept us away from a lot of great people. Uh, Doris and I worked together to put on uh, Bourbon and Beyond, and and you know I miss I'm you know the people we work with they are they do become family, and as we that's why I like you know I feel like these tastings are like so important because it gives us a chance to have community, it gives us a chance to like sip some whiskey together, and you know what we can we can, we can have a few laughs we can learn a little bit. And so I, I, thank, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for joining me tonight. Doris, I miss you too. I can't wait to see you again. I really can't. Maybe it's ceviche. Mm. It's a really a really nice really nice approachable um really nice approachable whiskey 
um, that I want to sit down and drink a little bit more. And its finish is on the back palate, and it's really all about that um, that back palate is a is kind of like loading up with some some spices. And I'm gonna address something real quick here. Folks are saying they're hearing they're hearing some beeping. Uh, that is actually from that's from the um, from the software every time you guys comment a little beep happens i think i may have um i think i may have fixed that uh joe warner asked uh what's that mead over my shoulder well joe this is a book i wrote it's called mead and i'm all about uh you guys know i'm, I'm all about history i wrote a little um uh, history book on mead and cocktails and everything and how to make mead. So go check that out when you get a chance. All right, so back to the tasting. Back to the tasting. So Stag, Stag uh, George T. Stag is a better nose, okay? So we're, we're looking at uh, you're basically looking at a, um, uh, at a at a boxer that's got like you know better stamina. It's got he's got more you know he's got a better knockout punch, and the stag is is really nice on the nose. I mean it's like really comforting on the nose. Well, the stag junior is quite a bit more is quite a bit more um young you know i mean it's grain forward uh and here's the thing it's eight years old so that's kind of like i shouldn't be smelling you know flecks of grain at eight years old i should really be getting more if anything you know oak and some of those more like caramelly uh notes but that first note here is is grain after that there's some floral and some citrus and so forth but grain's the first note but so the edge goes to stag on the on the nose oh boy i really like that i really like that palette I like that palette, but much like the stag, uh, the George T. Stag, the finish is is not there. Both of these whiskeys um, are not whiskeys that I would be rating highly. These are not whiskeys that are going to be in any way, shape, or form in my whiskeys of the year conversation. Nor neither one of these were last year. Um, they're not impressive to me, you know, because they come in very flat on the finish very very flat on the finish dave sweet writes uh do you think the comparison would hold for different years past a particular year of either that would dominate this comparison um i recall I recall being in love with the 2018, 2017, and 2012 stags. I don't. In the 2000, the 2002 stag is my favorite. I mean, the 2002 stag may very well be, um, it may be on my top ten of all time uh, whiskey list. But, um, yeah. I think if I were to compare, like, I wouldn't mind comparing the first batch of Stag Junior against 17. I think that would be a fair fight. I think it'd be a fair fight because those were both pretty, pretty great whiskeys.
Okay, so the nose, the the the, the nose has the edge uh, with Stag Jr. Um, I'm on the record as saying they both basically suck from a finish perspective, and um, now I'm going to basically what I'm how I'm making this decision is whether or not I like the flavors that I'm picking up in the 2019 Stag more than I like the flavors in the Stag Junior. And the answer is yes. Uh, stag, stag, um, stag is the is the winner tonight. That's Mister Stag. Yeah, I wonder if he um, what he would think about today's whiskey world. This is a man who would who would sue sue you, and his family would sue you if you uh, you know looked at him crossways. So. I wonder how he would think of today's market. So, he was a he was a good man, but I want to. This is your winner tonight, Stag George T. Stag. So, how about it, ladies and gentlemen, George T. Stag. And one more time. And one more time. George T. Stag wins tonight. But I think there's probably a good chance that it would not win against, uh, you know, other things that I would have here. Um, but, um, hey, that's why we taste. Can you all uh, think of anything I should compare it to? And maybe I'll just go in the back and uh, pour a little bit because you know I'll do it. You know I'll do it. I say I won't. And but I do it every single time because that's that's what I do. I'm a sucker for peer pressure, peer pressure. So bonus tasting. Who can give me who can give me a whoop whoop? No, I, I, I honestly, guys, I don't want to waste the Elijah Craig barrel proof on this because it's not even close. I don't, I don't need to taste that to know. So um, let's think, it, let's think outside the box here. Uh, how about, uh, guys? How about rare breed? What do you guys think about a rare breed taste off? In that rare breed, um, rare breed lost to a rare breed beat stag pretty handily in the last. Uh, in the last taste off if, what do you feel, think about rare breed we've got some booker's comments um some eh taylor barrel proof you want to send me your eh taylor barrel proof i don't have any at the moment uh looks like we do have some folks for for rare breed old ezra 107 yeah four roses look i'm just telling you all i really i'm really not a fan of the stag so it's not fair to it's not fair to put it up against things like uh, the Four Roses uh, small batch because it's not gonna it's not gonna win. Uh, but rare breed, rare breed does stand a chance. So I'm gonna play you all a little music. I'm gonna play you all a little music. Well, I'll go get me some. Uh, go get me some rare breed. <laughs> Everybody, young, old, 
this is our time to rise back from the sand and claim our freedom. Talking about the freedom. Uh, uh, uh. I was a little worried there that I wasn't going to be able to find the bottle. And then uh, I found it. And when I found that bottle, I then found uh, another bottle. I was like, oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to put this in there. But first, we need to, uh, sh we need to show off tonight's, um, tonight's uh, fellow taster. This is uh, Daniel Lynn, who is sipping alongside me tonight. Daniel is the hero we need in this world. He's not keeping his whiskey away from his palate, even though these are times that people are, um, are hoarding. He's busting into his good stuff. It's good stuff, folks. And he is drinking alongside me. So this is something I want to start doing more of. We'll get a little bit more organized on it for sure. That's kind of how I roll. I think of something on the fly. And then I perfect it as we go on. So uh, I love the idea of you all sipping a little whiskey with me after, uh, you, know, you know, after we made the decision. And I like showing off who is... Um, who is tasting with me, who's busting out the good stuff, and who is who is not too proud to like crack it open and share. And I bet you anything, if you all were in a room right now with Daniel, I bet you anything he would share a dram with you, and that's the thing. That's what whiskey is all about. It's about sharing a whiskey with your friends or your soon-to-be friends and enjoying the moment. Unfortunately, we can't be in the room together. So this right here, this is our this is our community, and whiskey is a community. And so Daniel, thank you so much for for sharing that with us. And uh, man, you really you really tore into that uh, that stag. Woo! You tore into that real good. I don't think you have much left, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I'm almost out too. I'm almost out too. So. Thanks for sharing that, Daniel. And now we gotta we gotta get to this bonus tasting, folks. This bonus tasting is uh, this is one I did not see coming. Uh, I honestly thought that I was going to like the the stag tonight. I, I did not like it. I mean, I mean, I pick I picked the stag over over the um, stag junior. But, you know, that's like saying, you know, which, which shortstop do you want? Do you want the one who hits 245 and steals 12 bases a year and has 15 errors? Or do you want the one that hits uh, 250 and has five homers and 20 RBIs and three errors? You know, it's just not a uh, – I just didn't dig the stags this year. So that's uh, – um, and that, that's just kind of the my, my feels on that. And, oh man, 
Oh, hey, everybody, Daniel didn't get a chance to uh, to see what you all were saying about him. So let's let's show his let's show his pretty face one more time. Let's show let's show him off. Let me see if I can find that photo. There we are. There we are. Let's tell everybody what we think about Daniel for being able to uh, crack that stuff open and and, um, and and drink whiskey instead of like keeping it around. Daniel is the hero we need in this world, folks. People who will not just let that whiskey just just sit around and stay unopened. So how about it for Daniel? Well, I'm glad you were able to come back and see that. And a big thing, man. This is this stuff is real. We're uh, we're stuck in this we're stuck in this thing together. But this is a community. We may not be able to uh, to share a dram together. But maybe we can ship one. I don't know. But um, but what we can do is we can come here every night, sip a little whiskey, talk about it, share what's going on in our lives, and sip more whiskey. So that seems to make the world better for. Well, I don't think I don't know if I'm going to be having this one now. We got a cork broke. A cork broke on me. So, hold on. All right, well, that that cork sure dried the fuck out. And look at this. I'm getting all my old old Iraq buddies in here tonight. Folks, that's my first sergeant from Iraq. Sergeant Major Joshua Reed. How about that? Let's get a let's get a round of applause for Sergeant Major, huh? Look at that. How do you like them apples? By the way, Top, you'd be proud of me. I was back to working out really, really good. I could probably pass a PT test again. And then this uh, coronavirus came and uh, isolated me. All right, so I'm going to start with the Balconies. So the story of Balconies, this was actually made by Chip Tate. This is a 2013. This would have been... Would have been um, this would have been a five-year-old, uh, five-year-old bourbon pot distilled, um, and this was on their fifth anniversary. And this was when Chip Tate was at the helm of Balcones, and I and I do believe Chip is one of the uh, one of the greatest uh, distillers of the craft movement. Uh, of course, they kind of got in conflict there and uh, and broke away, but very important person in the movement of craft whiskey. And I have stood by my thoughts on this being an excellent, excellent bourbon. What I have never done, though, is I've never pulled it out of the case and compared it in an analytical taste off to get something of the league of George T. Stagg. So here we go. Balconies, welcome to the big leagues. You're about to take on Stagg. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Have you ever just gotten that vanilla icing at the grocery store? You take that lid off, you peel off that that wrapper, and you stick that spoon in there, and you just put it straight in your mouth? That's what this is to me. Vanilla icing. Oh, mm, 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 mm. It's got that sweet oak note that my boy Kenny from Bird Pursuit would love. It is really, really nice. Candy corn. Oh, man. I miss Chip Tate's whiskey. He's such a great distiller. Now, that's not to say that Balcones has not done a very good job since uh, since they departed, because they have. Uh, but Chip was, uh, Chip was, to me, was a very special distiller. Ooh, baby. Man, that smells good. I mean, I want to, I want to curl up with this and and end the night. I want to, I want to read a book. So on that second taste, on the tip of the tongue, I get like a Pilsner beer. Um, 
and that's um, really, really nice. Mm. Really nice. All right, so here we go. Rare Breed. Rare Breed coming back in. Uh, this is not the same bottle that defeated uh, Stag and the other Buffalo Trace Antique Collection in a previous uh, tasting. However, it is the same proof. Okay, I'm not I'm not really smelling much here. I don't know what's going on. Surely I didn't lose my nose. Is it still there? Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, smell that. Definitely smell the stag. Huh. You know, weird. Really, really weird. I have to work on this nose. Uh, like orange peel. Oh, man. I'm going to wear my nose out. I'm just, I'm just going to taste this thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Now that's a whiskey. That's a whiskey there. That's a whiskey that comes on with all sorts of flavors, hitting that tongue left, right, up, down, tip, back, middle. It is just pounding my palate with all kinds of spice and sweetness. I love this. Think frosted cornflakes. Think uh, cornbread with, with, with brown sugar honey just dripping over it. Think a little bit of honey. Think, um, think like a caramel chew. Think uh, saltwater taffy. This, this rare breed is absolutely fantastic. And wow. Mm. Oh, man. Ah, oh, the moderator, Doug Pendleton, saying, um, give the stream a like and thumbs up. You know you like it. Yeah, hit the subscribe button while you're at it and click that little bell. It, um, at first, um, at first when I was coming to this, uh, approaching the rare breed, I was like, I don't smell crap. I don't smell crap. And then, then I put rare breed to my palate put rare breed to my palate and it just did its thing it uh it connected to my palate in a way that great whiskeys do so but in fairness in fairness to stag i'm gonna retaste it Yeah, I mean, it's got some nice flavors. It's got nice flavors, you know. It's like it. it it's kind of like a pitcher that has a great curveball or a great fastball, but they're a one pitch pitcher. You know, you can't. You know, you got Barry Bonds at the plate. What are you going to do? Throw him a, a, a change-up? whoop de damn do He's going to knock that hell out of the park with, with a steroid needle in his ass. So you you got to have more than just flavor to win me over. you got to have it all. you got to have the nose. you got to have uh, – I like – I actually do like color, but it's not necessarily something that I, that I can uh, you know, grade. But you got to have the palate. And – Stag, George T. Stag, the 2019 George T. Stag, has the uh, it has the nose. Okay, 
It's got the palette, but I mean, it does not have a finish. I mean, it's it's so like that finish is so not there that I, I would tell you that I would probably be picking like a four-year-old new riff or a five-year-old uh, Woodenville over this George T. Stag right now. That is where I'm at with this. And now those are two really, really good, two great whiskey brands that are on the rise. But that's to tell you that that kind of youth feels more promising on the finish from a palate perspective to me than this, you know, highly allocated, very hard to get 2019 uh, George T. Stag, which is why it didn't really do anything for me last year in the blind tasting. So, so I have effectively eliminated Stag from this bonus tasting. But I do, I am picking uh, Stag over Balcones in this tasting. Um, really, Balcones, well, really, really nice. It does have a lot of those elements I'm looking for. I would love to taste these barrels, like, you know, down the road. But the youth does show, and there's a little bit of that kind of, like, uh, oak, um, oak that I want to taste. I, I don't want to taste. Now, my boy Kenny might want to taste that because he's a sweet oak, sweet oak guy, but um, I don't really want that right now. And uh, you, you know, it, someone pointed out like you, you, you might have to get some get some cork there, but really, I should not be able to taste the cork because that happened in the in the process of opening the bottle, and so the the cork would not be not be a factor in that. So now, a confirmation taste, if you will. I don't think I really need it. Maybe this is really for pleasure because it's what I would say motherfucking good. Please also make sure you're not watching this around your children. Unless you're like me and you openly cuss around your kids. I do that pretty much all the time. Mm. Folks, I gave Rare Breed the love uh, last year when I did the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection taste off. Going to have to do it again now. This uh, this Rare Breed is the only great whiskey that I tasted tonight, and it was not even close. So... Um, can't say enough about how disappointed I was in the, the 2019 Stag. The Stag Junior, it really fit kind of like, um, you know, it should punch a little bit better, but it fit about where it should be in terms of the price point and, and all that. But previous releases have been better, um, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't that kind of disappointing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So... That's going to be it for the tasting tonight. I think uh, uh, just a couple reminders for you all. I do have that. I have for the first time, I'm going to have an artist play while we are, um, while we are, you know, at one o'clock tomorrow. That's the first time I've done that. Uh, I'm very excited about this to see how it goes. But uh, man, um, we're going to drink some whiskey. He's going to play whiskey on the table. And now I'm going to answer any questions that you guys have. And, of course, don't forget, don't forget, Friday are my best bourbons, best bourbons and uh, whiskey. So uh, set your schedules to be there 9 o'clock sharp because we're going to go. We're going to go and we're going to talk. And I'm going to tell you why I'm excited about all of them. Cannot wait to reveal this. I'm going to do it every quarter. Oh, thanks, Ernie. 
Ernie uh, Velasco from uh, from Facebook saying from one vet to another. Team, Team America. Woo! America. Nick says, I'm killing the secondary price for 2019, George T. Stagg. I don't think that secondary market listens to me. I really don't. Uh, Todd asks, is this a new bottle of Rare Breed? No, uh, Todd, I bought this bottle in probably August, September of 2019. So I bought like a case of these um, at that time. And um, so, yeah. So this is not new necessarily. Uh, Steve is a lot like me. And he says um, he's he's a, he curses around his kids. And uh, on cue, his seventeen year old walked by <laughs> and said, "You were bleeping watching that show again." He will learn. He will learn. You know, in five years we can have a drink with him, or four years. Oh, thanks, Eric. Eric Rothschild says best programming on TV right here. I appreciate that and listen i love doing this i love doing this this is like this is like something i look forward to every day i wake up thinking about this i wake up thinking about like what am i going to taste uh what am i going to say what cool little uh history nugget can i bring to the table that i might be able to get someone who i could never get to listen to about history because that's the thing that's the thing about who i am is that I love tasting and all that, but what I really love more than anything is to get the opportunity to tell you about the story of whiskey and the people behind it and all the really cool history that's connected to it. A lot of people don't realize how much whiskey has impacted the world. And even today, you look at the distillers. They're out there making hand sanitizer. That's huge. You know, you know who's, not, uh, who's not donating their time? The rest of most of corporate America, but the distilling community very much is. And it's not because they're loaded with profits and they got all this coming out of their ears. A lot of them might actually close down after this. They're doing it because this community, this people in this world in whiskey care about the community. I noted it with George T. Stagg in the 1800s when he passed away and how the Frankfurt community really mourned his loss and how important he was to Kentucky. And I talked about like how the distillers are making hand sanitizer. And tonight, we're all here just uh, enjoying the community. So that's what I'm talking about. Uh, all right. Derek says, next tasting should be Elijah Craig Barrel Proof versus Woodford Reserve Double Oak to buttery and deliciously sweet pours. You know, I can't. I can't put Woodford Double Oak in a in a tasting um, because I have a, a particular affection for it, and it, it's it's you're you're not wrong in that uh, that buttery note, uh, but I I just don't put that in these kinds of tastings because it I'm a little biased there. Uh, wow, Fat Tire, Fat Tire, what's going on, Fat Tire? I set out what Woodford Derby bottles today, including this year's brought smiles. You know, isn't that something what a bourbon bottle can do? Like they are they are a little works of art in their own right, but they they evoke a certain memory or a joy and it's great that you can set that out and just, just automatically have a feeling of like, woohoo. Yeah, I'm I'm all, I'm really, really happy to hear you say that. And uh, again, everybody, I can't, I can't tell you how much it means to me to have my first sergeant from uh, from Iraq watching this stream tonight. I know a lot of you all know me for my for whiskey and all that, but in my heart, um, even though I probably couldn't pass the PT test right now, in my heart, I'm still a soldier. And I'm still scared to death that Top is about to make me do push-ups for something that one of my soldiers did. So if you ever served in the military, you know that we're mostly worried about what our subordinates are about to do that's going to get us in trouble. 
<sighs> oh, Dave Sweet here, guys. Dave Sweet. Single barrels you have picked. I know you have done one or two. Now, that is true. What I could do in an upcoming series is do single barrel face-offs. I was actually thinking about this, and you all tell me if you like this idea. I was thinking about, you know, uh, going after clubs and see um, see if he see if they would uh, send me bottles, and I would pick my favorite of particular brands, and we would have like a tournament of the various uh, you know distilleries in like Dallas Bourbon Club versus Cincinnati Bourbon Club. You know, something like that. I, I wouldn't mind doing something like that. That could be a lot of fun. I think I want to do that. Love it. All right, so I'm going to do the club thing. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i put a call out, and, um, you know, if, if the clubs don't enter, that just means they're too chicken shit that their whiskey's really not that any good. So... Uh, all right. Well, I think it's probably time to uh, to close out. Going to go ahead and close out here. And as I do, I do ask that you click subscribe and hit that bell as a reminder. But I want to tell you more than anything that I'm just super excited that you all came here tonight, that you all are a part of uh, the whiskey community, and that you continue to come night after night after night. I'm going to keep pounding this stuff out. I'm going to keep putting this out there. Because you know why? Because I feel like as a community, we have to continue like just gathering. And it is and I'm going on other people's streams. I'm going in and I'm chatting and I'm watching. So like we are a community in the whiskey world, and as long as we continue to support one another and spread the word and join together, we can get through this together. And, and when, when it's all done, we can meet at Bourbon's Bistro or Silver Dollar or Jack Rose or some random bar, whether it's a VFW in the middle of nowhere uh, or Applebee's on 5th Street in Boise, Idaho. I don't know. But the fact is, is that one day we will be in a room together and we'll be able to do this little thing that they've been doing for a long time. And that's taking your glass and bringing it to yours and toasting and saying cheers. And with that, my friends, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining tonight. And please be safe out there. Wash your hands. Do not lick trash cans. Don't lick side rails. Don't lick anything in public. And remember, most importantly, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow night when I'm tasting a gift that I don't know anything about from my cigar club i'm a little worried that it might be a prank so tune in to see if it's something like a sex thing cheers